Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of my facts series where I tell you things that I've learned about GTA 5 in the 5500 hours that I've been speedrunning the game. There are some interesting effects that you can see on the mission Blitz play when you try to open the van. First off, while in the tow truck you are immune to explosions. Secondly, on a particular black dot, it is possible to throw C4 through the bottom of the van and explode the door that way. Everyone out, let's go! On the ground, now! Perhaps most interestingly, it is possible to blow open the doors without triggering the cutscene, making it look like the van is empty. There are a handful of ladders in the game that are short enough that you can jump up them instead of climbing them. This can have the side effect of weird camera angles. I saw a ladder. Climb up it and see if you can get to the roof. One of the greatest things about this series is that it has given me more reason to test things between the different patches. Initially I wanted to say you can jump off this balcony and survive only if you jump off in first person. However, it turns out that Rockstar has changed something. While on the earlier patches you can survive in first person falling off, on the newer patch you cannot. The normal process to get a taxi to come to you is to bring up the call on your phone, listen to the dial, and then skip through the conversation. This process takes about 7 seconds. I'm Doing a quick cab skips this process. At the end of a mission, when a cutscene ends, you have a small window where you can call a taxi before the mission pass screen comes up, which forces you to put down your phone. You Despite not hearing a second of the dial tone, the taxi will still come. Note I'm angling my camera here specifically to control where the taxi spawns. As boring as taxis are, they are loyal in some respects. If you call a taxi and then go to sleep, the taxi will be there when you wake up. You can both call a taxi, go to sleep, wake up and the taxi will be there, or you can even let the taxi arrive, go to sleep and the taxi will stay there for the hours necessary for you to sleep. Can I get a cab out to me? On its way, sir. While oddly harder to do on the newest patch, there is a way to skip the weight at the bank on surveying the score. Temperature at the bank, see if there's anything that stands out. That doesn't look like much. We can get a view of the back from there. It turns out the trigger for the waypoint and the trigger to lock you in place are different sizes, so if you drive to the side of the waypoint twice, it'll activate the waypoint without locking you in place. All you gotta do is take the temperature at the bank, see if there's anything that stands out. Hey, we are taking the temperature. That doesn't look like much. Man, security looks light. We send in a couple of sprung niggas, clap clap. What are you talking about, Frank? Hey, you! Two bikes. Take your pick. This one'll do. It might actually surprise you which of the five bikes on Daddy's Little Girl is fastest. There are three bikes where holding down the equivalent of the handbrake button makes you go the fastest you can possibly go. 
The fastest of these bikes, therefore, is the fifth bike at 75 km per hour. The other two bikes do bunny hops when you press the same button. These bunny hops enable you to get up to massive speeds, but unfortunately it decreases the control over your bike. So the best standard bike very quickly reaches its top speed of 75 km per hour and has perfect control over its trajectory. The best bunny hop bike takes a long time to get up to its top speed, which fluctuates between 75 and 90 km per hour. It also does not have great control over its trajectory, so you sometimes move in directions you don't want to move, or have to move around pedestrians, which loses you a lot of speed. So basically, if you did 10 runs where you used each of the bikes, the bunny hop bike would have the fastest time, but the standard bike would have probably a higher average time. What the fuck is wrong with you, Tanya? Ain't nothing wrong with me, nigga, shit. On pulling favors, if you block Tanya's door and then get into the tow truck, Tanya will politely ask you to get out of the vehicle. Clinton. Shit, your ass must be high or something. I told you, I don't do that shit no more. I mean, I baby doze now and again just for the taste. But I'm doing good, boo. Your eyes don't lie. Whatever you... Uh Whatever you say, girl. Come on. Hey, Molly. I'm outside the studio. All right. Go over the wall and find the car on the lot. Rockstar was not well known for allowing you to have many different options when it comes to completing missions. However, for a handful of missions, the game just seems to allow you to skip everything if you really want to. Take Deep Inside, for example. It's meant to be somewhat of a stealth mission. You get a new outfit and you stealth your way to get into the vehicle. But you don't need to do that, of course. You can just smash your way in and take it within a couple of seconds. Shit, is that security? <laughs> With the respawn point being so close to the end garage, you basically skip the entire mission. Although I imagine Rockstar didn't intend for the respawn point to be abused in this way. <laughs> You're developing quite the rep there, Slick. Another example of Rockstar simply allowing you to skip everything is architect plans. It's Franklin, man. I'm following the architect. Most people would do this as a stealth mission where you follow the architect and eventually steal his plans in a stealthy manner. But instead, you can just kill him immediately, take the plans and spray paint your car, and you're done. Here you're going to see me embarrassingly try to leave the mechanics and fail multiple times. The reason for this is the prompt, are you sure you want to leave Los Santos Customs, doesn't exist on patch 1.27. We of course normally just spam escape to leave, but on the newer patches of course you have to press enter as well. Ah, it's cracking. Hey, you got him? If you don't spray paint your car, and thus keep the cops on you, it is sometimes possible to still go to the end of the mission and meet Michael and Nesta before the cutscene plays. As you can see prior to the cutscene, Michael enjoys his invisible phone and Lester is doing stuff on his laptop, kind of, I guess? I guess Rockstar wasn't really concerned what the NPCs look like if you don't activate the final waypoint and instead just go to the end of the mission. This is just really, really sad and awkward. That's it for this week, guys. I'll leave you with a few clips of some oddities that I experienced testing a new strat on friend request. What? Why though? Am I gonna live? How?
What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs>